What is going on, Colts Nation? Here's Jamal Lawrence. I'm Eric Smith, your co-host of the Colts Cast. Yo, yo. Hey, we sent out a tweet. We sent out an Instagram post. We we, we went on every social YouTube, media outlet. Everything. Yep. And we said, send us your questions. We got the mailbag flowing. Tell us what Colts Nation wants to hear. And boy, did we get some questions. We got some in the comments, some in the email. And we're about to get right into it. We're going to have to probably break it into two episodes because there's a lot to talk about here. Oh, yeah. But, uh, Jamal, anything before we get started? Yeah, let's go ahead and, uh, for all y'all, hit that like subscribe button for us. We appreciate you dropping your comments Mm. and your questions below. So that lets us know you were listening. Let us know how you feel about our responses to y'all's questions. If you have any more, go ahead and drop them down there, too. Let's get to it. So let's get to the Q&A session. So if you commented, you know, on, on a post, uh, I'm going to read your name. If if you send an email, it's going to be anonymous. So let's let's start from the top. Jamal, old Colts fan White Law asked, and I quote, I pose this to Andrew Moore and Drake Wally. Your turn. Knowing what we know about the Colts roster situation, look ahead to the 2025 draft and pick the positions you fill on days one and two my suggestions are one safety two best player available three best player av- available day three o-line and more best player available um jamal you want me to start you start how, how are we doing this yeah go, go ahead you can take this one go ahead okay so in my opinion safety you know it, it, it's not a highly valued position to me uh, therefore, I, I'd be kind of hard pressed to take one in the first round. I think our last safety we took in the first round, Malik Hooker, I believe, mm-hmm. and don't even think we retained him after his his, his uh, rookie deal. I, I know we declined his option, um, but on the bright side, if, if you get someone like a Kyle Hamilton, that, that that would be amazing. But how many breakout safeties have you seen come out the first round? Not many. However. Chris Ballard's also one who reminded him of, of someone like Troy Palomalu, Ed Reed, or Kyle Hamilton in the first round. It was a blend of unique athletic traits or you know size, can obliterate pass catch, things like that. Great open field tackler. You know, you take him. No questions asked. Uh, he just has to be what, what the team believes, a true difference maker on the defense. So if you're going to draft a safety in the first round, they need to believe this guy is going to make an impact day one essentially um you know with that said if if there's a safety next year that that fits that mold i I believe that's a good target i feel like interior defensive line is another target i I would be looking at you know deforest buckner isn't getting any younger neither is grover stewart Uh, both are 30 years old still got plenty of plenty to to play for but always looking for the next man up how about cornerback i i was i was loving cornerback um you know, Dallas Flowers hits free agency in 2025. You know, what if Flowers, Jones, or Brents is in the long-term answer at outside corner? You never know. Of course, can't really make a decision this early, but those are my thoughts about the 2025 draft position selections. Yeah, I I, pre- I pretty much agree with what you said. Uh, first round, you know, round one, again, you'd be hard-pressed to take a safety, but I had Kyle Hamilton as well. I mean, who, who can deny what he's done? And that, and that was the exact reason why I said I would be okay with taking a safety in the first round. Look, jumping into round two, again, going by exactly what we have going on today, I know that Ballard has faith in this cornerback group. I still do not have full faith in this cornerback group. They're coming off of a lot of injuries um, and not a lot of playing time. Uh, with I know that they had some upside while they were on the field, but again, these injuries are setbacks. You're not getting that game speed. So I'm still hard pressed right now to not be very cornerback central centric. So I I would go uh, cornerback for round two, and then mm. looking at round three again, mentioning Def, uh, Defoe and and and. Um, Grover, they are definitely not getting any younger. So I would go interior lineman and then BPA, but more specifically, probably go O line for the fourth round and then BPA after that. So yeah, I you know BPA is probably not a bad idea. We we look at our roster configuration right now. Mm-hmm. Can't can't argue with that. You know, I I feel like we don't have too many holes, but again, we, there's a lot of players that need to be evaluated this season. So way too early 2025 draft position predictions for us. All right, Jamal. What, what's next up? Mm, just throw some at me, man. I, I'll take I'll take the lead on it, but just throw some at me. Okay. TJ Johnson Music asked, "If y'all can narrow it down to one word, what do you think will be the Colts' make or break this season? What is going to get us to the playoffs? What could keep us out?" Hmm. 
So I, uh, this is a this is a tough one because I think that the the word that most people want to use the first word that comes to mind is something that's plagued us injuries. You think about injuries that that's a, that's a big word. It it can mess up the flow of everything. But that's actually not my word. My word is going to be uninterruptedness. And I, and I and I and I think of uninterruptedness because I think about the injuries that are going to happen. They're going to be on the field issues. They're going to be off the field issues. They're going to be stuff that we can't control. But what you can control is your destiny and, and, and everything that's in your line. So if you're not interrupted by these these accusations or anything that's going on or off the field, I think that you set yourself up for much better success because losses are going to happen. Injuries are going to happen no matter what. So we can't ride that coattail. So Shane Steich is no nonsense policy should help keep this team on track for some uninterruptedness. Ooh, I like that. I really like that. That's a good word. I'm going to keep it plain and simple with mine, Jamal quarterback. Mm. Quarterback, that's that. That's what's get, Anthony Richardson. Uh, if 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 y'all don't catch my drift, he can get us in, and can, he can also keep us out. You know, quarterback's performance can dictate the success of of an NFL team. Can Richardson stay healthy? This is the ultimate question. So the first obstacle in his second year, you know, he, he flashed a lot of talent in a small sample size. We we saw it last season. We liked what we saw, uh, but there's there's some things we didn't like. You know. Can he put it all together and improve his accuracy, his processing, things like that down down in his second year or or kind of first full year leap? You know, th this team can have double digit wins, I believe, uh, and Shane Sykes second mm -hmm. season as head coach and make the playoffs. You know, I, I think the Colts Vegas line right now for regular season wins is like eight and a half. I mean, we're <laughs> we're we are on the cusp of double digit wins. So, yeah, uh, uninterruptedness quarterback. That, that's how I look at it. I like it. Hey. I think I think we knock out one more question this episode. Yeah, let's, let's get one more in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. S uh, Spiff. Hope I said that right. Spiff asked. I'm curious to how many passing and rushing yards Anthony Richardson will have. I think he'll have 4,100 passing yards and 750 rushing yards. It's a low chance, but he's great, man. Optimism at all time high. Hey, listen, I, I, I'm not mad about the, the numbers. <laughs> Do I, I think they are just a little inflated? But you know what? I I'm I'm gonna I'm break some down some little bit things for you because this was a hard one for me when I try to think about what these guys bring to the table and who these numbers they put up. Gardner Minshew what had 3,300 yards or 3,200 yards, something like that for us last year. So he put up some numbers. Now were yeah. some of those numbers in garbage time? Sure, maybe so, but. Uh, getting back to what AR can do, I'm personally thinking AR is sitting around that 3,700 range. 3,700, roughly 217 a game. Very doable. Very, very doable uh, with him being healthy and being in the game with the weapons we have on the offensive side of the ball. I could definitely see a 200 piece per game because they're going to be those seven flows. They're going to be those high games. They're going to be those low games. Then, as far as it goes for rushing, so this one, I, as much as I would love to see him get 750 yards, when I think about these guys who are rushing, uh, only three quarterbacks last year had over 600 yards. Uh, J Jalen Hurts, Justin Fields, Lamar Jackson. So I think absolute max for Richardson, given the fact that we have JT in the backfield, we're, get, we're looking at 600 tops on my end because that's averaging around 35 a game. And I know you may think to yourself, well, 600 still seems like a lot. But the way I think about it is he's going to have these games where he's going to have a breakaway run for 35, 40 yards on just one run. They're, they're going to happen. Now, it's not going to happen every game, so but that's going to inflate those numbers a little bit for us to help him get towards that. So I'm just, I'm just basing my number strictly off a of huge chunk plays. So I'm going to say 3,700 passing, 600 absolute tops rushing, and I and and I want JT doing the rest of the work. Yeah, I, I was laughing earlier because uh, 4,100 passing, 750. Like I'm laughing out of joy. Like if yeah, if he can, if he could attain that, that that is some astronomical numbers for for MVP. a quarterback. Who hasn't even played a full year in the NFL? So I want to inform everyone that like four thousand passing yards is is really good. Oh yeah, like, it's so good that the Chicago Bears franchise hasn't had a four thousand yard passer ever, ever, ever. And, and last season, only ten quarterbacks achieved over four thousand passing yards. Will AR five hit that number? Realistically, I probably not. You know, Indianapolis. I, I I always think they're they like to run the ball. They're they're a run first team. They'll they'll do it if like we we saw in the Steelers game last year. I mean, we ran it the entire third quarter. Why? Because it worked. Um, Shane Steichen. I think with with a healthy Jonathan Taylor, he he's ready to get back there with Anthony Richardson. 
you know, it, we're going to be like a 50-50 team, 50-50 as, as far as passing Russian plays. You know, Russian quarterbacks, I, I just feel like they generally have a harder time achieving that that 4,000 passing yards. I mean, look at Lamar Jackson last season. I mean, he won MVP, and I think he only had like 3,600, and that, that was Lamar Jackson as a pocket passer. So it, you know, putting up gaudy numbers in the passing yard department, you know, doesn't always equate to an amazing season or – doesn't tell you the full story. So 4,000 passing and rushing yards, I could see that. So that that would be my prediction. Okay. Uh, however you want to divvy it up, 3,500 plus 500, absolutely, if he can stay healthy. Okay, I like that. I like that. Part one right there. Part one. Hey, we got some more questions headed to you later. Let us know what you think in the comments about those. I We really appreciate the questions. Absolutely. Um, this, this this has been a fun episode, and we got some more coming your way, all right? Hey, that's going to be it for us, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Colts Cast. We're live on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or any platform you use to listen to podcasts, and we'll be back next time to give you some more Indianapolis Colts content. Later. Later.